you know, uh, words. Uh, tell me about TikTok. <laughs> I, we got off on a tangent, but I was trying to get through a timeline of, of Los Angeles. What I forgot about? what we were even talking about before we started talking about my poor financial decisions. <laughs> I mean, you've, you're in the green. <laughs> on I am in the green, and that is true. I am very slightly in the green. Uh, anybody, you know, it's easy. It's easy to win a trade. You know, it's uh, it's not easy to consistently make a sweet career in middling commercials and TikTok. It's probably easier than it is to play the stock market. It's very much like playing the stock market. It's very like you're gambling. The whole thing is just rolling dice, really. I'll go ahead and I'll find a segue to make it a natural segue. I mean, Although that's, that's actually kind of true. Yeah. How is it? Is that is 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 it is it a uh, kind of a crapshoot? Well, yeah, I mean, acting definitely is like you just span, you get, you try to go to as many auditions as you possibly can. And if you book like one out of 10, you're fucking killing it. You know, like if you do like, I don't know, I've probably done like maybe like 15 to around like 15 commercials in the last 15 to 20 in the last like five years. And like, that's a pretty good rate. And I've probably auditioned maybe like just ball like maybe like five or six hundred you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm like that's like okay at least by my standard it is that they ever fucking hire me at all and yeah. tiktok's kind of the same way you're just throwing shit out there and sometimes you throw out a video that you don't even think is very funny and then the next day you're like oh five million people saw that and other times you spend time writing it and you like edit it and you're like oh this is so funny and then like nobody watches it and you have no fucking idea why or like what you know so from 2014 when you came in la right yeah um what was your did you land gigs off the bat or or what kind of i mean what was i actually did i got my first my first gig was a commercial for google google play which is like a now defunct it was like something where you could like sort of like a pre Alexa, you could stream like music to different rooms in your house or something like that. The commercial was just me dancing around in a kitchen with a girl who was playing my girlfriend. So there's no dialogue. And I booked that in like October of 2014. It was like the second or third audition I went on. And I was like, Oh, I'm fucking killing it, dude. Like I'm about to blow up. It was your, you know? that was my rival, dude. I <laughs> thought it was my rival. <laughs> And then proceeded to not really blow up. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, then, then uh, man, it's, it's, we, uh, there's too many stories of like, that was like, that was my first, my first agent. And then I booked that one. And then like, I don't think I booked anything else with them. And then they dropped me like six months later as a client. They're like, yeah, fuck you. You're not promising. Like, bye. So then I got another agent who I booked a lot of stuff with. And then in 2019, he fled with a bunch of people's money. He disappeared. Oh, wow. Dude, he was taking money. He was taking too long to get me like residuals checks. And 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 I was like, you know, he was clearly lying, like saying like, oh, I, I sent it. I put it in the mail two weeks ago. And then I would get it. And it's like, they fucking put a stamp on the envelope that says, you know, sent like the date that it was fucking went through the mail. And it was three days ago. And it doesn't take two weeks for an envelope to get from one part of LA to another. It's not the fucking Pony Express, okay? So I was like, I think this guy's kind of fucking around, but I'm not sure what's going on. And finally, I had to call him because he owed me like a couple thousand dollars. And he, every time I try to call him, his assistants would be like, oh, he's in a meeting. Yeah, he's in a meeting. I was like, he motherfuckers in a lot of meetings. <laughs> so I called them and I was like, I was like, I probably should admit this on, on camera, but I was like, I'm coming to your office at like one o'clock on Friday and you're going to have my money. Allegedly. But like we're not going to like what happens then. Yeah. And so I showed up to his office and he had two assistants and they both came out with a manila envelope with my, with my name written on it. With the and I like pulled out, like pulled the check. And I was like, where is he? And they're like, he's in a meeting. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, you fucking tell him. <laughs> I was heated. I was heated. And then, but I didn't know, I thought it was just me. That's part of why I was pissed. I was like, he's playing around with me. Like he thinks he can. And then it turned out he was stealing from like his entire roster. He stole like tens of thousands of dollars 
from various people on his roster. There was like an article that came out about it. And he fucking fled the state to this day. As far as I'm aware, nobody knows where he went. They were trying to, they, they wouldn't, the, the, they weren't going to press charge. Like the DA wasn't going to press charges. So I was on this email thread of people being like, we're trying to serve him papers for a civil litigation and no one can find him. His house is empty. They're like, is he in, is he in Texas with his family? And I just wanted to be like, dude, he's gone. <laughs> he fucking, he fucking music manned it, dude. He did skipped it. town he, and he like, it. he did, he did it. And that's what it's like. Whenever I tell the story, I have to give the caveat that it's like, he, it's kind of awesome yeah. that he actually did that and got away with it in like 2019. Like, I didn't even think that was still possible. And he fucking pulled it off. You know what I mean? Oh, he oceans oh, 11, a bunch of fucking struggling commercial actors and like, you know, fair play to him, dude. So, is it because? Because I was gonna say, like, everything seems like it was paper, and it was like, like, what do you? I was gonna ask, is is that a common place where you're still getting, you know, things in the mail, checks in mails from? Not people? anymore. Yeah, yeah. I get. I was even gonna say that as I was telling the story, is I probably should have been suspicious that it wasn't just direct deposit. Yeah. You know, my agent now is direct deposit, and when I signed with my my new commercial agent like a, a year or two ago. You know, I told them the story and they had talked to other people who had been his former clients. And uh, and I was like, they were like, oh, well, don't worry. Like, we won't mess around with your money. And I was like, you better not, because if you do, I'm going to be at that door with a baseball bat. And we all like laughed. But it was like, I'm dead serious. Yeah. yeah. So they hit me with a direct deposit. They're very above board. Nice. Um, is there like technology for for kind of gig workers that can like. I don't know. Is is there a cool modern AI tech company that replaces agencies? You can kind of like, I don't know, do it. Not yet. Yeah. They've insinuated themselves pretty heavily into the, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure they have their own uh, uh, industrial baseball bats for people who want to do that. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And to their credit, like there's definitely a human element to it. Sure. Like I work in, I work at a casting office too. Mm -hmm. And like my boss was like, there's some guy who runs one of these casting websites that like the, the, that they use to like organize auditions basically. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how he just, he just came out and said he wanted to have an AI to replace human casting people. Yeah. And she was like, I'm going to take this motherfucker down. Yeah. Like he can't do, he can't do this, you know, like just to have like a robot do it. Cause like, there's a human element to you build relationships, you know, people Definitely. like you have. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, in theory, an AI could do anything any of us can do. Right. But like, hopefully that doesn't completely replace everything. Cause like, or just know. something that, you know, improves some kind of old bottleneck that makes things slower or something. Or at least yeah. things up more. But I'm sure, I'm sure, um, especially because you're like working with humans doing like acting is <laughs> a, a pretty uh, human thing. Um, so I'm sure uh, the relationship part will always be baked into, uh, I guess, uh, entertainment stuff. But I'm, I'm sure there's what's, what's like the, uh, what's the biggest problem? Maybe like with casting and then like as, as someone like finding gigs that you find um the biggest problem as far as what like just day-to-day -day operations yeah i mean just when you think of oh this is really annoying in what i do either you know when you think of kind of a casting industry or finding um, both as an actor and as working in casting the most annoying thing is working with actors actors are annoying people and i'll say that as one they're annoying people yeah. there's certain things it's mostly comes down to conduct in the like waiting room area of like, there's a couple faux pas that like always annoy the fuck out of me, whether I'm, whether I'm in there, like, you know, do it like running the audition or whether I'm in there waiting to audition. That's just like actors trying to do the most. Mm -hmm. They can't just come in and sign in and look at the script and fucking sit quietly. They have to like, do some extra shit and like they always think they're so fucking charming and they're always trying to fucking have pal around and uh, most of the time i'm just like shut the fuck up yeah <laughs> sit there shut the fuck up go in and do your thing and get the fuck out yeah just to be honest 
that's a lot of time uh, because i was i was watching a uh i was watching something and there's something about about shooting movies and they were saying like a a two minute scene will always like take two minutes so i was thinking just from like a time perspective of like people auditioning um an audition will always take like a certain amount of time and that's kind of baked into a long period of time where auditioning for things maybe you have a, a cool uh, an experiential waiting room for actors i don't know you can make a uh on, i mean just from a kind of low-hanging fruit you can make a <laughs> a uh a, a channel online channel of p of actors in a uh in a waiting room doing something i don't know you put them in a vr helmet so they can get all their fucking like you know the most annoying thing is when you're this is more so if you're if you're auditioning it's like two people know each other <laughs> just from like whatever yeah. and they make such a fucking meal out of it or like you can tell it's like you guys don't really know each other really give a fuck this is an acquaintance but because everybody's a little nervous and a little stressed out and they're like am i gonna be funny am i gonna do it right fuck i really need this job yeah they over they overcompensate and they're like brian <laughs> fuck so good to see you man how have you been and you're just sitting there like i fucking hate both of you dude you're <laughs> not that excited to see him you do not give a fuck about brian dude and brian's going after the same role as you you would love it if he got hit by a car on the way in here i know you would I don't. I see through it. Okay, all this fake bonhomie. I don't buy it. Bonhomie? What? Like goodwill, like oh, brotherly love. I, I think know. now that you question it, I'm not sure if I use that correctly. <laughs> it just came out. Is it a Vietnamese word? Vietnamese? I don't know. Is it bonhomie? Oh, you're talking about bon me? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what, that's what I heard out your mouth. I didn't understand what. It's you're one word. It's bonhomie. It's like like b o n h o m i e. I'm gonna look it up right now. I need to know if I use that correctly. <laughs> Never heard it in my life. Um, so commercials. How did the uh, how did the the TikTok rise to fame start? Um, basically, I had deleted I had deleted all of my social media. Okay, Bonhomie, a, a pleasant and affable disposition, geniality. Whoa! Can, is there a? Can you have Google say say it out loud? Hold on please <laughs> Wait, do it on homie sounds vietnamese i think it might be french mm. it's okay you don't need to do it <laughs> well now i want to hear it okay all right it's not doing it all right fine uh how did how did tiktok start um so last summer or 2020 yeah. summer What's your what's your username on TikTok for people that don't know? Oh, it's Nam Dakum. Is that and a great search engine for TikTok? Is there not? I mean, you search people's users usernames. And yeah, that's kind of cool. But usually, if people are like scrolling through TikTok and they're like, "Oh, I, this person is baked into my algorithm, and I really like them," but there's a lot of times where like you don't know 100 percent that person's username, and you're thinking like, "Oh, what's what's this?" person that bakes cool cakes and you're like i just i hope they pop up again oh true because you can't really just google like cakes and think you're actually going to find them yeah 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 that's true um but yeah what's your username on tiktok okay so it's nom de coom n-o-m-d-e-c-o-o-m uh which is a name that i came up with when i was just going to be like scrolling and i didn't think i was going to make any videos <laughs> or anyone would see the name Interesting. um but uh yeah i mean i mean essentially i just made an account last fall and initially was just like was just gonna watch videos because tiktok was the only social media that i still thought was fun to use because well, you see why did you think huh? that was less? i just didn't like like I, I i had gone through just like a very rough personal period so i deleted my facebook and instagram which were the only ones i had left really because well, I didn't want to be like, I just didn't want to be out there anymore. You know, I didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to see, you know, I was just going through like a rough period. And I was like, I don't want to fucking see anybody. And I don't want anybody to see me. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm a ghost. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's when uh, you, you, you dive in and really hunker down for a year and then. Yeah. Take something, you know. <laughs> and then I was like, well, 
The only one that I like miss using is TikTok because that one's kind of fun. You'd see mm-hmm. funny shit on there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll make a TikTok. And then I started making videos like just like here and there, just kind of for shits and giggles. And then one of them last December like blew up, mm-hmm. like went viral in a day. Which one was it? It was this video where I was making fun of this guy who was putting on a Trump hat. He's this guy and he's like, he's like, if I'm wearing this hat and he puts on his Trump hat, he's like, I- I'm going to kick your ass, buddy. And like, I saw a bunch of people making fun of him, like doing a stitch where they do that. And then they put on a different hat and be like, and if I'm wearing this one, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, this is funny. And I had this uh, like newsboy hat, like a, like a Peaky Blinders hat sort of thing. And I was like, oh, I'll do that. And I'll be like, and if I'm wearing this hat, like, oh, give me all your trinkets, mate. Like, oh, doy, 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 doy. Yeah, yeah. Just saying like gibberish that sort of sounds like British slang, you know? Uh, and, um, you know, I made that in like 30 seconds. I was like, oh, that's like kind of funny, I guess. Yeah. And at the end of that day, it had like 2 million views. Yeah. Everybody thought I was referencing Peaky Blinders, which I've only seen one season of. And I think it's good, but like I hadn't even watched most of it. But people were like, the Peaky fucking Blinders. And I was like, okay, great. Like, we accidentally got onto, like, Peaky Blinders TikTok, you know? Okay, nice. Um, And so then after that, I was like, all right, well, it's cool how you can, like... Because I used to post shit similar sort of, like, just front-facing comedy videos on my old Instagram account before I deleted it. But that would just be put... You know, my, my friends who followed me would see it. But I was like, oh, well, I guess TikTok, you can really, like randomly blow up if like it gets the right metrics that whatever they use to push it out to people you know so you sort of have this like huge potential audience so i was like well that's kind of fun i'm just gonna like i remade some old bits that i used to do and then i was thinking of new ones i was like i'm just gonna fucking start making videos as often as i can and that i find them funny and like see how far i can take this yeah um I think what your videos, your TikToks got onto my screen was your, uh, is the history bits. It's history bits I love, dude. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, how, how do you, well, what, is, there, is there a significant payout for, for the numbers you're hitting on TikTok right now? Not really. Yeah. They have the creator fund where you get like, you know, cents per stream, Mm -hmm. but that's not really, you know, that's not going to be a significant amount of money. Um, I've started to get like, like brand deal offers, but I haven't done any yet. Cause like, I don't really want to start dropping fucking ads. Like, you know, if I get one that I feel like I can make a funny enough post out of that, it won't be that much of a decrease in quality from a normal post. You know, I might do it, Mm -hmm. but I'm sort of using it. I mean, I'm mainly just using it as a creative outlet because it's fun. Mm. Um, but also sort of in the theory that, you know, it could help me get better acting or writing gigs. So I'm like, I feel like it's worth it to not try to like maximize the monetization yet and just keep like putting funny shit out there and building an audience, you know? Yeah. So I was going to ask, how have you thought about getting an audience from it? Because I know kind of just kind of like using TikTok myself and as a user and semi creator, but not really creator. I upload podcast podcast clips to TikTok, but other than that, it's not like I'm creating skits or anything. Um, it's kind of there's kind of friction of getting people like off TikTok that are even your audience on TikTok to like follow you. In, in my mm-hmm. opinion, from what I've seen, I don't know if you have a different experience or. Oh, no, I've had the same experience. Yeah. It's like, you know, the, the, I made another, like six months into making TikToks, I made another Instagram because I kept getting content violations on TikTok and I was afraid they were going to ban me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, well, fuck it. Then I'll just like switch to Instagram if that happens. And like, if the video gets like, like if a video gets like millions of views, I'll get like 20 followers on Instagram from that. You know, it, it doesn't really train. And I've seen that in other creators too. They'll have like hundreds of thousands on TikTok and like a couple thousand on Instagram. Very much so. It's, it's pretty commonplace from what I've seen. But it's sort of like, why would they? If your video content is going to be the same content they can see on TikTok, 
And then other than that, what? You're posting Instagram pictures. You post, mm. it's my birthday. Oh, look, I'm with my friends at a party. You know what I mean? It's like, how much more interesting is that than what they're getting from TikTok? Like, with probably yeah. a better user experience on TikTok, just from like, much better UI, just from scrolling and like, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So, kind of need a different variation of whatever your audience wants on a different platform, possibly. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, what you would do differently you know i think just if people really fuck with you yeah they'll follow you on another one because they just like they like you you know a percentage of like a million people but, that might be right like if a, a million people might watch your video and be like okay that was funny haha -ha. yeah but not most of them give a fuck you know they're not like oh wow now i want to see like your trip to the grand canyon you know what i mean like they're not that interested as they probably shouldn't be you know so it's kind of it is kind of hard to completely create because i feel like it's a lot easier on instagram <clears throat> maybe not from an entertainment perspective of but you know people making personal brands of, of talking about mainly things that like people watch to help them the audience watches to help them in their own business or personal pursuits or um i don't know that's just kind of my instagram experience i'm sure some people just look at butts and abs all day um but people can make a pretty good personal brand on Instagram. Um, and it, it kind of feels like it's harder to make a solid branding of yourself via TikTok. I don't know if, if you have any other like people you see that have succeeded in that realm. But I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess maybe depending on what you mean by like a brand like. Yeah. Like, I think my my brand, if I have one, is like the history guy. Mm hmm you know and like that's sort of just built by like the fact that that's the subject of a lot of my posts mm -hmm. you know they're not all about history but like most of them are mm -hmm. um and that's sort of like i don't know i feel like that sort of naturally became just because that's what i make videos about um do you do that i guess that that's what got the traction and you're like oh i can't make other content because it gets less traction no i i do it just because that's what i like I like history mm -hmm. and I just find it, I got into the groove of like thinking up bits about like, you know, just thinking of like a historical time period or figure and being like, okay, they're, what are they doing? What's funny? You yeah. know, like it wasn't really like, I definitely didn't go intentionally thinking like, wow, there's a hole in the market for history humor. On, yeah. <laughs> Frankly, I'm shocked that it's even gotten as much, you know what I mean? Like I'm truly surprised. It's, pr it's a pretty interesting, like, psych study of, of of like diving into why that's humorous um, yeah i think i think it's just because people like you're living in this time and you're like interacting present moment and you're like well other times were present moments for other people and so it's kind of this heady exactly yeah exactly like you think about history and it's like you know the way in like a history movie everyone has a british accent no matter what time period it was and it's sort of stilted and fancy and you're like oh every we kind of had a stick up their ass back then yeah but it's fun to imagine you know a roman person being like what the fuck i'm so stressed the fuck out like what am i doing you know being like like being like a in imperfect like freaked out like that their times were scarily modern and moving too fast for them just like ours you know what i mean being like these fucking aqueducts, like, I don't like it. I don't know what they're doing with those. You know, yeah. it's like, it makes them more human. Yeah. And in a way, it's almost comforting to you because it's like, mm -hmm. well, they thought that shit was scary and time has gone on for a fucking thousand years without us completely destroying ourselves since then. So maybe all the scary shit from now, even though it seems like we're fucking toast, maybe they'll be in a thousand years, someone will be making a skit about like, oh, global warming, I'm so scared, you know, like after if we solve that, which we yeah. probably won't, but. <laughs> but that's what they said about the aqueducts, man. They thought the aqueducts yeah. were going to take over the they world. They really thought the aqueducts were the end, dude. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. And I think that's why I kind of, I uh, I think that's just what maybe my humor picked up on when it when it popped up in my own. Um, yeah, I find that fascinating. Um, I mean, do you take it to, I don't know is, is content creation something that it is kind of just on the side of creativity outlet or is that something you are trying to, to to leverage up i mean i'd be happy to if i could figure out how to 
figure out how to monetize. I'm still like sort of thinking about this, like how to monetize it without alienating the audience, you know? Because like ultimately, on TikTok, if people if people don't watch for a long time, then it just it creates a. I think for everything, but I think especially with them, they might have. I'm not sure how it works explicitly, but if people don't watch for a long time, it, it goes down. It's very mysterious, but basically, like, I, I I've grown to really love it. Like, it was sort of just a side thing. Can you dial up a TikTok rep at a certain amount of like? clout on tiktok and be like yo what's good so i've heard but it's not it's more clout than i have okay i've heard that like if you get a million followers or whatever then you get someone you can talk to but like at the end of the day you're you're beholden to the algorithm and it's not like they're going to change the algorithm for you like i have a friend who has like four or five million followers or something and she like knows people i wonder what they think of me there because on one hand like i make them a lot of content and i get you know people using the app Mm. On the other hand, like it's not super family friendly mm. and I've definitely gotten a fair amount of like videos taken down because of like content violations and yeah. sometimes I've appealed them and gotten them reinstated, but other times not. So I kind of wonder if they're like, if I'm a problem child, and they probably don't even fucking notice me yet. But like, was, if there's anybody who's watching me and they're like, this guy's <laughs> fucking trouble, dude, this fucking class clown ass piece of shit. <laughs> Just in the TikTok headquarters. I was I was I was thinking about you know before getting on like how many people they have under their scope of like thinking about working with because I know you, at, at some point YouTube is like there's probably a, a too numerous amount of creators on YouTube for YouTube to take a stake in a big percentage of people or even if they do take a stake in people anymore I don't know if they're separate um, yeah but yeah the the even with like Facebook and like Google, like on like advertising sides, they they take a stake in like certain people of using uh, ad spend, so they you can call them and say what's up. But I always find that interesting of like companies talking to the creators and users of of platforms that um are like the largest. Um, so I was thinking if if what role tiktok has in, in creators of that are using the app it's interesting like when does it become more symbiotic because initially it's like i'm sort of benefiting off of them they're not really getting that much benefit off of me because they're giving me a place where i can post creative shit and find an audience but then i guess if you get big enough then it's a little more two ways because you're like a reason people might get onto or stay onto the app you know but i think that's once you're a much bigger fucking that's when you've got like you know fucking hype house sway house type numbers where you're like millions and millions of people are fucking following you. i feel like that's when they you know but uh i have no idea i'll say that nobody's reached out yet so if they're out there hit me up <laughs> you know the the <laughs> the entire audience of ricker and bond is just tiktok corporate so you know yeah you guys seem pretty corporate over here we it's you know it's uh it's uh, it's very corporate it's it's the new corporate you know the uh the self corporation yeah yeah talk about corporate things but in the embodiment of people that were born after 1995 <laughs> sure and wear backwards hats I, I usually wear this hat front front facing because it has a hashtag team ricker and my face wearing a hat on the hat but it's kind of cloudy here and the lighting wasn't good. As an aside, um, 